Oh, is he breaking in already? He's already breaking the seal. There you go, boy. It's time. We do have clean oil pans, so whatever comes out of here, that is from the oil. That's all right. We got a little sample on the ground. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I can't see anything. Oh, holy fuck! Holy shit! <laughs> Whoa! Oh no, look at that color that shit change. Looks almost green. Dummy. Dude, it's golden. Not in a good way. Let me get out of here and show you all this. Is that my Oh no. Oh, that's yep. Hang on, let me get let me get up in there on that. Uh-huh. Dude, this is some pretty paint. Look at the flake. Hey, give me some, give me some light in there. No, 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 no. Wow. Give me some light here. Shine your light here. Dude, that is straight metal. Oh. Wow. Yeah, that's not good. That's, that is very that's impressive. ferrous too. Yes, so that's it is. That's not bearing. That bearing is, is what you're seeing floating in here, all the goldy silvery. I didn't even think about that. that. You're that right. That being ferrous is something else. No speculation in this house. You know, I think we should paint the floors this color. It also hides whenever things go wrong. Wow. Whoa. You know, I've only ever seen oil look this uh, clumpy in like meme videos. That's the Jimmy's oil. That oil looks a little sus. Honestly, that's the most I've ever seen. I've seen more on a differential, but. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the belt stayed on. Oh, it did. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you decide to part this car out, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's, <laughs> there's literally just chunks of metal sitting here on the top of the filter. You can barely see them, they're small. You're not gonna be able to see them on camera. Yep. This is not at all how you put an oil filter open. Oh. Well, now what? It's just Gavin doing stuff until he's got a meeting. Round two, fight! Now obviously this is definitely gonna contaminate it a little bit at the top and it's gonna have a lot more shavings at the top than what it's gonna accurately represent just because we're cutting it off this way. But I don't think it really matters at this point, if we're being honest. Holy. Yeah, there's a copper coming out. That looks pretty bad. Give that a look. How are you gonna let your oil get that dirty <laughs> when it's a race car? Look at that. <laughs> yeah. Nice and pretty. Yeah, there's a good, see a good chunk Where's right it? there. A little bit of copper in there. Oh yeah, look, there's copper right there. There's yeah. copper, oh my God. Sacrificial material. Dude, there is copper everywhere. Oh wow, that's pretty. It's hard to see on camera, but pretty bad. Hey guys, real quick, I just wanted to let you know that the 12 days of SK sale is still going on. And today their new sale is on their Facebook page. They're giving away a full set of a 3 8 ratchet with a full socket set as well. So make sure you go check out their Facebook page. Behind me is yet another destroyed engine and today we're gonna be pulling it out. Uh, after the video where this engine blew up, I figured that I needed to address a few things because you guys' lovely comments kinda ticked me off a little bit. <laughs> so first off, point number one that I really want to address is that a lot of you guys were looking at the pulls that we were making you guys saw and told me that I cannot drive like over and over and over like the comment section was literally just spammed with people saying that I couldn't drive because I was literally sitting in the red line. As ignorant as these comments were because of what I'm about to say, I, I'm just going to be patient I want to kind of explain to you guys who aren't aware of how this car is set up so that you don't think I'm an idiot. This car's factory cluster from factory in 2015 came with a 6700 RPM rev limiter, meaning on the cluster, the physical cluster only, only the physical cluster, the red is above 6700 RPM. This engine is rated to spin over 8000 RPM, and typically we've always spun these cars over 8000 RPM because they're rated for that. The engine is built for that, but the physical cluster 
that is in the car on the dash red lines at 6700 now if i were to have a digital dash on here and get rid of that i guarantee every bit of those comments would be gone because at that point i would just say hey this car can spin to 8500 we're showing 8,000 RPM rev limiter on our digital dash and everybody be like, that's great, okay. But just because it's a red zone on a factory cluster, people cannot wrap their minds around that. So despite as much as I would love to just say, yes, you're right, I can't drive, which you are right, but um, the car is literally on purpose supposed to spin past that red zone on the factory cluster. So please do not think just because it is red on the physical factory stock engine rated cluster that we're breaking something or hurting something or I'm horrible at driving or stupid or whatever because it's just not the case. But I appreciate you guys that are so mechanically inclined out there helping us out. Point number two. As you guys probably saw in the comment section because it was pointed out to us a ton and we did not even see it even during the time of editing it, there was one section where during a pull, directly after a pull, the temps completely skyrocketed. And I mean, it was random, it was out of nowhere. It was right before the pool where the hose blew off and everything. But what happened that was so odd is that we actually cut right in the middle of where the temps were spiked because we never saw it. We went and ended up going and looking back at the raw footage and found out that what was weird is that directly after doing a pull, the temps were normal. They spiked up all the way to the hotline. I mean, it was only a few seconds. I mean, maybe six, seven seconds, something like that. At most. And again, I'm driving the car, so I'm not looking at the temp gauge 24 seven. I need to look at all kinds of other stuff along with trying to hold the car on the road. So a six second span of time where I did not see that the coolant temp spiked, I guess that was my fault. But I'm just explaining to you guys, I never saw it. So it spiked and then came back down to normal before doing another pool. So by the time I guess that I had looked off, six seconds and look back down, it was back to normal. So I never saw or never even knew, we never even knew editing it until somebody in the comments started pointing it out. And I was like, ah, oh, that's pretty cool. We went and drug back the raw footage and saw that just for a few seconds, it had spiked for some reason. And obviously we know now it was because of a head gasket issue, but we didn't know that at the time. All right. Definitely spinning our asses off, but it was holding, holy shit. We're going straight, that's all that matters. Let's give her one more go. Nope. Didn't like that. after that we went to do another pull and that's whenever the radiator hose blew off and it makes sense now looking back on it in retrospect because what had happened is the head gasket blew it was over pressurizing the system it was allowing boost to get introduced into the cooling system and obviously blew the hose off it makes sense but at the time I didn't know that because temps were fine at the time that all of this happened so I had no clue what was going on initially I just thought that for some reason the hose popped off. Obviously that's dumb because there's gotta be a reason for it, but hey, I'm just explaining. Now, why did I not stop beating on the car after it blew the hose off? Let me explain that. Whenever this happened, I told you guys we had to go to the track the next day. I did not wanna take this car all the way out to the track and have something happen, so I was more comfortable sending the car until it blew up out on the street because if it blew up, fine. I am ready to pull this out anyways because I told you guys now for a while, in fact, it's been like a year, I've been saying I wanted to go to a new setup on this car, but before I did that, I wanted to literally do everything that I could to try, just try to get this setup to work. And it didn't, and I'm sorry, it didn't. I could have for sure, you guys are right, I for sure could have not beat on it after the hose blew off and could have evaluated some more and investigated and found out that it was a head gasket and then fixed it and kept, I was just done. I'm so sick of this setup causing so many problems over and over and over and fighting with it because we don't even actually get to make content with the car. So it's extremely frustrating to have a car put so much work into it just for problem after problem after problem after problem. It's just, it gets old. So by the time that I saw that that was having problems, knowing that I'd already spent everything, all of my resources trying to get this track day going, I figured let's just figure out if it's broke once and for all. And if it's broke, 
I want this whole thing out of here and we're going to put a whole new setup in it. That was my thought in my head. I didn't vocalize that. I guess that was a mistake as well. So don't think I'm an idiot for doing that. It's just that quite simply, I just didn't care. I didn't want to take it home and try to figure out and figure out what was actually wrong with it because I don't want to fix it. It's just, it, it, we're getting this thing out of here and we're going to go to a new setup. But before we do so, I wanted to make this video so that we can get it out and kind of analyze what happened. And now with all of that being said, I want to give you guys what we hypothesize happened. So after talking to Lund, uh, we, I don't know if you guys were paying attention or not in that video, but I was data logging every pass we were making. I saved all those data logs and sent them over to Lund to have them verify just to check and see if anything was wrong with their tune. And they're really honest people. They was, have seen that there was something wrong with it. They would have said, oh, shit, something leaned out here, something something like if it leaned out of course that makes sense why a head gasket would pop after looking at the tune and the data logs and everything they verified that there was not a single issue there was no problem whatsoever with fueling with timing with air fuel ratio with literally anything it was perfect it was running great that leads me to believe that since it's not a tune issue what else could it be because it's very obvious at this point I'm, we don't even have the engine out so again this is all just guessing but we're guessing here that the head gasket did pop and that's what overpressurized the cooling system that's what popped off the radiator hose that's why the temperature spiked and came back down that's why the bearing failure happened this all makes sense but again this was not able to be known because there was no smoke coming out of the exhaust. Typically, whenever you blow a head gasket, immediately white smoke is everywhere out the exhaust. But this is a boosted car, and so it was harder to tell because instead of water coming into the cylinder and going out of the exhaust, boost was going in the cylinder into the cooling and blowing everything apart on the outside. So that's why after we put the hose back on and filled it back up with water, temps looked normal. They weren't even, nothing was out of the ordinary. There was no smoke, there was no nothing. And that's why after filling it all up and seeing that everything looked fine, I continued to try to beat on the car because I didn't want to waste my time going out to the track with it just to have it break out there and inconvenience the track owners. And I didn't know, what if we oiled down the entire track? That would have been really bad for them especially. So I didn't want to do that. I was trying to be responsible. Today we're pulling this thing out. We're going to get it torn apart using SK tools. Ooh. Thank you so much, SK. And after that, we are going to figure out what happened to this thing, especially because the last time we didn't open up the engine and we just sent it off to the company who built this engine and they just told us that there was nothing wrong with it except for timing was off and that's why it was knocking. So this time I don't want to send it back off. I want to verify ourselves uh, why we're having yet another engine failure. Oh, one more thing too. Speaking of engine failure, Lund did say as well that being that the data logs were fine, it is incredibly, incredibly uncommon to have a head gasket failure on an engine like this rated for 1500 plus horsepower again only making 920 wheel horsepower we even tested the fuel just to make sure that we're not having ethanol problems our fuel tested at 92 percent and we are running a tune basically set up for 85 percent ethanol e85 this has 92 percent so we're actually even better it's more safe with that being said i just wanted to make sure you guys understood i'm just trying to cover my bases so that you can stop please god telling me that i can't drive and that's the reason why this engine blew up it has nothing to do with me i don't even know how that makes sense at all like it doesn't even logically make sense this is going to be the last time that you guys are going to see this engine combo along with this blower in this car not happening no more blower no more engine no more nothing we're going to a completely new setup so hopefully you guys are lit let's do it to get our cam member out you guys already know this whole process but we got we got a few bolts on each side that we've got to get out it's almost funny how many times that we've done this exact process yeah, except that it's not <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this side is sitting on stand, so we're good on this side. All right, everything looks good, so Doug's gonna finish taking them off of his side. And we should be able to get up and get ready to start lifting this thing. <sighs> All right, guys, so pretty much we've got everything loose at this point. What we're gonna do, as you guys know, you've probably seen this a hundred times already, we're gonna lift the body of the car up, and as we're lifting the body of the car up off of the engine's K member, the engine's gonna stay there. And so what we're gonna have to do is kind of work all these connections and wires around the engine just to make sure that nothing gets hung up and tears or breaks. Yep, I'm watching. Still looks good to me. I'm no, coming down. Oh. Uh, <laughs> the sh shifter just shoved through the rag. It's okay. This is funny to look at. Go ahead. Pause 
Yep, just gotta get this brake line out the way of this belt. Yeah, I'm just trying to get it moved out the way. Okay. Yeah, that's clear. Yep. Yeah, we're clear now. Good. Yep, it's just pissing cooling all over the car, but it's okay. Okay. <laughs> yep, no, I can see everything now. We're we're actually pretty good. Alright, up she goes. It is, yeah. I'm really, really, really tired of seeing this. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, yet again, we've got the black cars, engine, and trans on the ground. You guys know the next steps. We're gonna pull off trans off the back. But before we do that, we need to put some jack stands under the headers because they're gonna try and tilt the whole motor back. So while you do some ugger rip I'm gonna go ahead and start pulling harness off this motor because we don't even need this one here anymore. But first, let me grab my favorite SK tool. <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> these here these are diagonal cutters They're extremely nice for cutting all these zip ties off wow if your car is not held together by the zip ties then you're doing it wrong it has been scientifically proven that's oh my, wow that's your favorite i think that is my favorite honestly dang that's a pretty nice flex head dude flex head lp90s are incredibly useful for getting in tight spaces <laughs> Whole box full of SK tools. That's how you keep a man happy. For all those girls out there wondering what to get your boyfriend for Christmas, there you go. Some SK tool. If I were to tell you that it's been a long fucking week, I would be really, really, really just under exaggerating it. It's Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> Last thing before we get this entire wire harness off using yet another SK tool, we're going to use one that they're going to be upset that I'm using probably, but we're going to use a flathead to pry. This is how we do shit out here. Oh, oh fuck. That why I said I was gonna wait. Yep, that's why I got out the way. At least that would have been all. Oh, yep, wiring harness. Yeah, it, it'll dry out by the time. It's just still the water. Yeah. We'll just get a new wiring harness. Fuck it all. Well, while we're at it, why don't we just get a new car? I've, dude, you don't even believe how much that I've considered it. <laughs> you would not believe. It. That's why we're just gonna rename it. Cause I think the biggest reason I need to go get this thing blessed, and I need to do just everything that I can. I know what it was. Wait, didn't we sprinkle holy water no, on this? Actually, was I know why you got such oh. bad luck. Is because whenever you were at the money shift, you sprinkled the water and didn't say a prayer. Alrighty. Well, wiring harness is off, so we're back down to a bare engine that we about to get started pulling apart. Doug just got the starter off, which means that now we're gonna be able to get this trans out of the way which means that i'm gonna have to hold this engine up so it doesn't tilt backwards and fall yeah dude i am so lit this is exactly what i wanted to do on my tuesday morning guys yeah wiggle dee dumb wiggle dee doo look at that awesome mantic clutch damn it's already got some heat in it wow yeah it holy shit. damn son what come look over here oh well the first the first thing? No, the intermediate, the middle one yeah, is cool. like purple. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty dope. She heavy. Oh yeah, hang on. Flip it over right quick, if you can. <laughs> yeah. She heavy is Boy, a good word. Yep, yeah. nice. Nice, nice. I don't know where y'all have that other Nice. <laughs> Throw that out in the trash, I saw it. Right, just kidding, just kidding, just kidding. Put it on the BMW, right? <laughs> this is my favorite site when you pull a blower off. Oh yeah, especially the ones that have the catch cans already. Let me grab an SK Tools 10 millimeter wrench, not wrench, socket. Here you go, you can have that bro. You can just have that. Thank you. It's beautiful. Thank you, thank you. Blower and intercooler is off. Oh, that's milky too. There's just oil sitting on top of all the valves in there. Love it. I'm gonna grab an SK Tools wrench yet again. It's not a wrench, ratchet. Let me grab this SK ratchet and then I'm gonna go down here, not in this drawer. I'm gonna go in this drawer and I'm gonna grab this here. Then I'm gonna grab this here. All right, so this is where we're gonna get fun. We got them broken loose, we can uh, do a zippy do. Take a short hmm. time Not too bad. So all the plug, well, you got two more on this side, three more, but those plugs on that side look good. See how this one looked a little, a little darker? That might be our failure one. Yeah, it's got a little bit it's, of oil it on it. It kind of smells a little different. This one came out of number two? No, the first one. Oh, oh okay. yeah, I agree with you. That one does look like that one. It looking kind of sus, bro. All right, here we go. All right, ready. Now these blocks are all about to fall. Oh, nope. So just because I'm curious, I want to pull this open, see what it looks like in here. It's actually pretty good. That's pretty even, no heat spots. It is extremely blue, but it looks pretty good. On the other side, looks good. 
Actually a little bit of heat spells, but nothing bad. So actually overall, despite the discoloration, everything looks like it was doing fine. So clutch doesn't even look too bad. I think we'll be able to reuse this with our new setup for sure. It's a nice Christmas sweater you got there. Thanks man, you can get it right now at www.dls.store and every dollar that you spend on the site is gonna get you automatically entered in to win the 2017 Ralph Stage 3 Mustang. Damn, you are getting good at that. What? Yeah. Wow. It's not like I say it. 40 times a week on You're minimum. Right, but it gets better and better every single time you say it. Well, I start remembering what I gotta say <laughs> after 45 takes. This is the sixth giveaway. It's happened six times now. Ah, oh, you're right. Wow. Yeah, roughly 40 times per week for six different progressions or iterations. Here, you can go to www.itsjustasix.com slash shop and every $20 spent gets you one entry towards getting this car right here. Also, don't forget to go get entered in to win the Corvette. www.itsjustasix.com slash shop. Every $20 spent is going to give you one automatic entry in towards winning the car. So. www.itsjustasix.com Every $10 spent will get you entered to win this car. Go to it's just the six.com every ten dollars that you spend on merch is going to get you automatically entered in to win the freaking gt500 so but it's just six.com right now and every ten dollars that you spend is going to get you one automatic entry four dollars will get you four entries can you guess what i'm going to say next what are we doing gavin well it's been a few days and uh the reason why it's been a few days uh is just because we had some things come up and so today, we're going to be finally tearing apart this motor and figuring out what's inside. It's completely sealed still, have not opened up anything. We're going to pull the valve covers off, pull the heads off, cams, all that good stuff. Double check and see what kind of damage we're looking at. Again, the car did pretty much completely lose oil pressure, so I'm hoping at least maybe, maybe by the grace of God, we can salvage some cams because these are really expensive comp cams that I got in here. Same thing with the timing set. It's a really nice timing set. Hopefully nothing got completely wrecked. It's really sad because I got the block and then after that we had to spend, I think for like supporting stuff, it was like $12,000 in supporting stuff just to get this thing assembled. And then once it was assembled, we've made like six passes or six pulls on it in two years almost. <laughs> It just sucks so bad. Well, there it goes. Ta-da! How's it look? Believe it or not, it actually does not look horrible. Yeah, it, it still had oil pressure, so. Yeah, that was the important part. If you guys remember when we were coming back home and I was saying, I was like, all that I care about right now is just keeping oil pressure. It's extremely low, yes, but as long as we have pressure, we're good to keep driving, and that's why. It's just to keep oil flowing past these cams. Yeah, this side looks <laughs> a little wonky, but not too bad. Remember what I had to do with the other one? Yeah, that's not too bad. I was just more worried and concerned that the top end was gonna be goose, but it doesn't look horrible. <laughs> Now the whole thing should just slide down. Yeah, it's just gonna have a little bit of R2D. Holy You're... mother of God! Jesus Christ, dude! Oh my God! Your present, sir. Oh yeah, I mean I expected that fully. That is a lot. <laughs> Hey, there's we stuff and fine. things in there that aren't supposed to Are necessarily you be right there. Kidding? That's impressive. Look in here. That's that's real impressive. That is not sand, guys. <laughs> That is not gold. <laughs> Jesus, I love how it's just all piled in oh, one little spot. Dude, this is gonna look bad. Yeah, those bearings are gonna look pretty toasty. I gotta go next door, hold on. I come bearing porridge. Whoa. I take a sip. Porridge. Porridge. <laughs> what do you mean porridge? I'm not, I don't like porridge. Oh. Oh, Ugh. God. Oh my. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello, you know, bearing material. Hint, that is not gold. Well, I'll, I'll also give you a hint. Those giant chunks in there, those aren't rocks. Oh my god. I, don't, I like how there's this beautiful. That's not sand. <laughs> I wish, you take off the valve covers? I, I wish I was yeah, a gold miner in California. It is it, the it, 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 the one that frame up. We're rich! <laughs> we hit gold! Hey, is this where the phrase panning for gold comes from? <laughs> I've never in my life, like, I have not seen. That's incredible. That. Um, so, where's it all coming from? Well, we're about to find out because we're disassembling bolt in right now as we speak. Yeah, all right. Yeah, all right. Judging off of this, it is, I think, quite obvious. You should know watching this that this is very, very indicative of a major, major bearing failure. Well, there's your issue. There's water in the engine. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it might be a, a thing. Oh, oh, is that, what oh, oh, this is also my favorite. What? Just straight up bearing all in the pickup tube. Yeah, oh. it's pretty rough there. Crunchy. Crunchy. Wow. Oh, look, I'm richer. You can take your little pickup tube. Try not to lose the O-ring. I mean, well, who are we kidding? We're probably going to have to. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, like that's the last thing that matters. I wonder if it was main bearing. Dude, it looks like it's main bearings. Are you serious? Wow. 
So right now, the reason why Doug is rocking the rods back and forth is because if you have a rod bearing that goes out, typically there's not as tight of a gap anymore. And that's where knot comes from, is because the bearing is gone, there's now space going up and down, click, 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 click. So by rocking it back and forth, we'd typically be able to find out where it's coming from. So unless it was about to seize the bearing and basically just weld the rod to the crank, which is also a possibility why we're not hearing anything wiggling, it was possibly a main bearing. You know what is a good sign though, is that the pistons look good. I don't see any heat spots on the rods either. Thrust, I mean, no. you, can, you can watch it and you can barely yeah, it's barely, see it. barely moving, but nothing major. Probably a couple thousands. That seems pretty normal. I don't see any bluing on any of these rods so my guess is it's eating, eating the main bearing i didn't think that these would show anything just because of how strong they are i'm interested honestly like the more yeah. that we keep going on i'm getting more and more excited just to find out what's up going on. hey you know what else is kind of weird stand here and be like, they're slacking the chain well there's no oil pressure in the engine right now and then why is this one got look this one's springing that wow. tensioner so. was swapped out because they claimed they previously had defective tensioners and it was causing engines to fail. Whenever we sent this to them, they claimed that it was an issue on our end with timing, but somehow whenever we got the engine back, there were brand new tensioners put on here. Didn't know why, didn't get an explanation for any of that, none. Now, it looks like their tensioner is beginning to have issues. Now, yeah, just for comparison, yeah. like it's not, it's not like this is only, they're supposed to have at least a little bit of spring like Doug was showing here. See how this one kind of springs out and back? This one's just locked. And I mean, that one doesn't even, you can lift it off of the, it's not even extending. So it either collapsed or it's something's going on because it had low oil pressure. We don't know. Definitely not going to blame the tensioner at all, but I'm just saying it is, it's just funny. It's, it's very all. peculiar. It's funny. Yeah. It's very peculiar. <laughs> That's a good word. Well, I had to put those on, so I don't know why they're seized up now. You didn't put these on. I didn't. No. no. Put these on. You're right. I just had to grind the yeah. thing. Oh, that's what I was about to say. And this thing is put on here, no kidding, with like 400 foot pounds of force. I, I'm, I wanted Daniel to start recording in case this breaks because. They put red on that. Dude, Maybe. that's not coming off. Nah, you just, you yeah, got it loose for him. Yeah, you got it loose for him, man. It doesn't want to even compress. It's collapsed, probably. Either collapsed or something's wrong internally with it. Like, because that's. Plenty of tension. These things normally just barely squeeze. You can yeah. squeeze them typically with a firm hand. Check that out. So this is what it's supposed to look like. Should just this pop is out a not failed tensioner. Now, if you notice that, and typically whenever you squeeze them all the way down, there's a clip that you should be able to grab. That. This right here, you mean? Oh, yep. There you go. That is what a right, a proper, proper timing tensioner looks like. The other one is 100% seized. Don't know why yet. Could be a variety of issues, honestly, or reasons. You might need a, a pry boy. Get that SK pry boy in there. By the way, guys, if you want an SK pry boy for yourself, click the link down below. Yeah, we're going to come off. Oh, well. Yeah, I know. I'm also interested in that. <laughs> is that supposed to just slide off? Yep. That normally just, just slides straight off. And that is not just sliding off. <laughs> this is so not supposed to be on here like this. It's all about the Lavernges, bro. There we go. I don't even want to look inside that oil pump. <laughs> I, I, I do. I do. I really do. Oil pump off the front. Yeah, you can definitely see flake. <laughs> look bit. at all the built up. All right, guys. So this is our oil pump housing. Inside of here are the oil pump gears. This is driven by the crank. This is also where all the oil flows from. And this is why we're excited to take it apart and see what it looks like. It really don't look too bad. It's got some wear though. Yeah, it's got some, but it really doesn't look horrible. See if it's beat up on the inside area of it. Oh yeah. It's definitely seen. You see all of it impregnated yeah. in it. Yeah. It's been crushed in there. So it's the softer material, but it still gets crushed yeah. into it. It's important whenever you take cam caps off. I know we talked about this before, but whenever you take cam caps off, don't forget that there's valve springs underneath your cams. So it's important to literally evenly loosen them. Don't just pull them out all the way because then you'll end up with bent cams and you'll hate your life. Slowly but surely back them all off evenly. Start small, yeah, we'll then start big small. brother is back up. Make sure that... Oh, the cams are actually loose. Nice. No seized cam, so that's a decent sign. Keeping the cam caps coordinated to where they came off of in retrospect with the cams. Super important for the caps pretty much get molded to a specific part on the cam and if you rearrange them you will have a lot more wear now that we got the cams off well not the cams the cam caps off you can go ahead and pull the cams off there it goes yeah okay this is gonna be our right side yep we are not looking good i'll be very honest these cams are 
Yeah. Oh. Yeah, they're looking a bit, good bit warm. Every single race. That's what I was worried about. Intake can. <laughs> oh, yeah. No one's stuck. Dude. There we go. There it is. Yeah. 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 Brillo yep. pad. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, yes. Okay. Oh. Those are f I'm not even gonna. I'm not even gonna halfway lie. That is. This is something that is very weird. It's only on one side. Only on the exhaust side. You see that? I wonder why. Look at that, and it's like it's eating into it. Why is it? The intake side looks fine. On this side, it's, it's still not looking too good on this side at all. Pull on the rest of the caps off, and there's just yeah. That's not. That's not gonna. That's not gonna fly. Don't hey, that, that don't looks look good. Well. This side looks oh well. I mean, it got eaten into, but it's not like <laughs> not like that other exhaust side. Check yeah. that out. There's just bearing material sitting on the cam rays. <laughs> our cams are taken out. They look pretty bad. We got our timing set out of the way. Head bolts and completely loose now. So at this point, with our SK mallet here, we're gonna pull this head off and see if this is where we're finding an issue at or not. Nope, mm -hmm. not this one. It don't look like. But those pistons look good. Oh, look, there it is. Look okay. right here too. Look, one, two, two three. Oh man, look, three cylinders. Boom, look, boom, yep, boom. here it is. You can yep, see it. You all see three it of them. Through. Yeah, you see there those. There it is. Look, you can see it burnt through right here. One. That one's not as bad. It looks like it's more on the top side, and then underneath, you see where it's pushing through here. But this one was definitely. That was a burnt one. Definitely one. Good this, hypothesis. They all look like they aren't sealing perfectly on this side. You see how it's coming over? You're seeing exhaust chamber yeah. gas right there. This one wasn't in the jacket, but I think maybe that one was that for one. sure. You could see it more on the head, though. More on the head where it was pushing over. You can still see it right there. Yeah. This one's extremely bad. Well, there we go. Well, it's definitely obvious. We had a, a head gasket failure. These are head gaskets whoa after I didn't they realized your that chromatic head gaskets so backtrack just a little bit last time whenever we sent this engine to them we had chromatic head gaskets in here chromatic is known for being a pretty decent head gasket and like really good head gasket and they took those out saying that those were known for having issues on these cars and which just makes it so much more ironic i'm not gonna lie this situation is so redeeming i don't even care that the car blew up anymore this just feels good honestly this is fun it is all of this that got talked to we got drugged through hell on the internet doug literally was on by every single person in the comment section for weeks and weeks and weeks everybody in facebook groups everybody here there and anywhere behind a keyboard basically that for, doesn't know anything about engines yeah, yeah sat and said that we could not do anything could not assemble we needed to send it to a typical true youtubers engine can't yeah. do anything yeah want to blame somebody else i mean it's just funny as all well because everything that we were called stupid for is just being proven to for sure not be our fault this is this has nothing to do with us we our hands were off both times just saying it's not coincidental Make yep. Sure uh, two more there. Two more. One. Two more. This one was bad. Yeah, that one for sure. This one definitely is pushing through. This one had a little bit of. Look at you see the material that's built up on there. Oh. That you can see the rust inside yeah. of the cylinder. The weird thing is, it does seem to want to fin rather spin rather freely. Uh, let's go ahead and rotate it 180 over again and uh, take a look. We'll probably pop a couple of the rods off and see if any of them look. Yep. Easy killer. There's a box there. At this point, we're just going to go ahead and pull out rod bolts, try rods first, get the rods out and see if that looks bad. If we don't see it there, then it's going to be main studs, so we'll, well, it'll it'll mean a main bearing failure, so we'll probably go ahead and pull out the main studs. But I have a feeling, based on the pistons, like I said, my hypothesis still stick with it. I'm still saying rod bearing will say it. Go ahead. Right here, this is my guess. This is this rod right here. That one. That's the one that I'm thinking. All right, well, we're going to find out here in just a second. Quick. Alrighty. Yeah. Moment Do a of truth. Separation here. Nope. Wasn't that one? No. Nope, wasn't that one. Yeah, that no, one's definitely on its way out, but. It's just beat from all the Pro rest of the yeah, material. That's what we'll say, probably from the rest. You want to push it out? 
No. Or you leave it? I'd say we leave them until we do a full disassembly. We're yeah. just taking peeks right now. It's like pop the weasel. Okay, it wasn't that one. No, no, <laughs> All right, we'll go around in a circle. Doug, you're next. You pick a rod. I don't think it's <laughs> Which any, one do you I think? don't think it's any of the rods. I really? think it's a main bearing issue. Well, you want to just go ahead and pull the caps off? We can definitely pull one or two of the caps off, yeah. It ain't going to hurt nothing. Look at this here. Wow. wow. SK. Very, very nice. Half inch. Extremely long. Healthy nice. Look at you go. That the, you can one hand that thing. Last bolts coming out of these main caps. And so once we get these out, we're going to be basically seeing directly the crank and seeing basically where, I don't know, yeah, maybe where it failed maybe. Maybe. Oh, no. That's not where the know. copper's coming from. It's definitely not where the copper came from. Oh, well, darn. It is a failing bearing. That's not it. I can see the veins. Don't pop oh, the blood vessel. on me, dude. Should I make sure you keep those in the same spot. <laughs> Got it. I'm glad you said that right there. Darn. Nope. Was not that either. We're getting the rest of the rod bolts loosened up right now, so that way we can get the main studs out. Or not the main studs, the main caps out. We've already got all the main studs out, um, so the caps are ready to be pulled. We just need to get all the rods out first. Don't look good. Yeah. See? What in the heck, dude? No rod bearings that way. She's going to pop out with, with vigor. There you go. Yeah, they really actually don't look bad at all. There's no abnormal skirt wear. There's no piston issues. Honestly, like no ring line issues, no nothing. Everything looks very healthy on here, which further indicates that we did have a very good tune on here. Nothing major at all going on. How's this one looking? It's not the culprit. About ready? Yep. Numero two, sir. Bearing stayed with that one, but it's just suction. Yeah, what's up? It's not, not the culprit. Yeah, it's not the culprit right though. This one does look like it's undersized almost though. Look at this. <laughs> look, it's not seating into the... Oh, what? Hey, and it's not seated That's into there at all. Look at it. It's almost... An, you see that? Yeah. What is it? So like look it at this. Just falls out. The camera hopefully can see this. Oh yeah, you're right. Look at that. That is not the right... Maybe it might be heated up and like like blue and stuff, but it's definitely not wanting to fit in there properly. And neither is the bottom side of this one. You can tell that it started to spin a little bit as well, but nothing bad. That's not the culprit, but it was getting bad. This one was also uh, chewed, chewed so pretty bad. One of the... this, is, this is probably one of the culprit cylinders here. I uh, wonder. It's not even like destroyed, no, but look, it's, it's, it's pretty. It's underside. Like you see how it yeah. doesn't cup into here? Yeah, same thing with this one. Yeah, because like Doug's saying, I'm not saying this is the wrong bearing by any means, because that's not what I'm saying. But what is odd is we've taken apart plenty of spun bearing engines, and this is not. It's not spun. It's almost like it just doesn't fit into the half moon properly. Yeah, this is not common whenever we take these apart at all. This is definitely probably one of the things that's going on here but like whenever you pop a bearing into here it should pop and stay into place it should not have any kind of gap like that and where it would like just fall out on both yeah so and there's also tangs that are supposed to hold it in place and those aren't even really fitting in anymore which is odd and we're not spun on the outside so it should still the other possibility is that this is one different rod somehow with a slightly larger bore with the right bearing so this is the next one that we pulled out and after pulling this one out you can see this is how a bearing is supposed to sit well kind of i mean it's not the gap's not closed but it shouldn't just fall out of place you see how the half moon fits into the half moon properly mm -hmm. there's no gap on either side here that other one was not so either the rod isn't machined properly and this diameter is wrong or the diameter of the bearing is potentially wrong so what we're gonna do so doug did bring up a good point just now he was saying that what was weird is whenever he was first loosening the exhaust cams on the first head the first ever cam that we pulled out today if you get remember whenever he was loosening he was saying that they were super loose and then whenever we pulled it out, we saw that it was just completely marred up and destroyed in there. And also a combination of that mixed with the tensioner. I don't know why that both of those are having problems, but possibly the cam bolts were left loose and possibly uh, another issue too could have been that the cam bolts were reused for the cam caps and they're torqued to yield. So if they were torqued a second time, it could have been possible that they stretched Too and much. being that we were spinning this thing to the RPM that we were, if it would have been reused, that's it's a possibility. It's a possibility, yeah. You can get away with reusing them in certain circumstances, but it's always judge by case. Look here, another so, instance where you can pull the cap yeah, off and the bearing it, doesn't just fall. <laughs> it's, it's seated in there properly and there's tangs to locate this. The other one, it's almost like the bearing was too small and was stretched around the crank, kind of like expanded to be the size that it needed to be. This one 
looks a little sus too. It's a it's a little on the weird side. It doesn't quite fit in there, right? More the same. That one looks not the worst. So, I mean, even this one's pretty. Yeah, that one's relatively close to being what it needs to be. And one more, and then we're almost done. Pretty clean overall. Well, not too bad. Not horrible. On its way up. Yeah, not horrible. Okay, so now we've got all the rods out. We inspected all the rod bearings. Definitely got some damage along the way. Of course, two of them are pretty bad. I'm not gonna lie, but it's still not nearly 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 enough to figure to just answer where all of that copper in the oil pan came from again only making 920 wheel that's my favorite part to add on to yeah all of this. i mean look at this this doesn't even hardly want to like you should be able to take a crank free and spin, spin it and just spin go, it by hand yeah and spin mm -hmm. oh yeah we got something going on here oh yeah i think this is definitely, probably not gonna look too happy in there there it is <laughs> Well, yeah. the bearing didn't even come off. <laughs> uh, it's just suction to it. That's actually not that uncommon. Looky here, though. Ooh, you can see the heat. You can see heat. That's, yeah. Oh, that's heat, dude. A little, little bit. That's heat, dude. So you're going to score the bearing. Oh, We're going to reuse it. Yeah. <laughs> right? Good God. Yep, that's it. Oh, yeah. That's the All right. I'm going to go ahead and set this down. Yep. <laughs> that's it right there, boy. <laughs> The, the copper's still on the... Definitely 100% mains. A main bearing failure. Along with a head gasket. <laughs> yeah, see, wow. This, one, this one's barely... Yeah. Damn. It shouldn't do this. I'm just saying. Let's go ahead and oh, take yeah. number one out, too. Yeah, while we're here. It's all supposed to be... Dang, I was only one off. Boy, I'm the one who said mains the whole time. Oh it's funny God. because literally like this is bad enough to the point where we all had different guesses of what failed and it turns out we were all right. Yeah, we were all literally everything just we failed. Right. Somehow. Just mass carnage. Weren't you told that with that blower and pulley combo and this engine and everything is supposed to make like almost 1100 and it didn't for some reason? Yeah, now we know this why. That's because it had so much drag in it that it wasn't hardly fucking wanting to turn. That actually makes sense. Well, normally it ain't this difficult to pull them off. Don't do this if you're watching this. this yeah, is please for the love of God, this is this is not what you're supposed to have to do to get a main cap out. But since they're seized, uh, you don't really have a whole lot of options. Somebody might want to <laughs> do a guard there. There they go. This one's going to be bad. Yep, here it is. Well, it's stuck to there too. Yep. Look at all the heat on the back of these bearings, though. Look at that. Look at the heat. You see on this one right here? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know what good that did. Uh, honestly, I don't know. Are we sure there's not something we're missing here? I, is there a top side? I don't know if it's come out that easy, yeah. All right. Now we should just be able to beat the piss out of it and get it off. That's coming off now. I think it's stuck to the crank. Oh, yeah, all the mains are... Freaking for Google. <laughs> oh, 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 yes. That's what I like my main bearings to look like after four pulls. I love this. Oh, yeah, there is metal all in the yeah. main bearing. Yeah. How's it going, boys? Oh, it's going real nice. <laughs> that usually means it ain't. That's a main bearing, not a rod bearing, not a anything else, mm. not tuning related, not anything related, machine issue. That is a main bearing. Yeah, I'm. I'm Definitely not the uh, engine mechanical oriented guy here, but uh, even I know that's bad. You tell me this engine knows how to weld? Oh, it was trying to learn. <laughs> and bro, everybody's like, it's y'all's fault, it's our fault, it's our fault. I can't drive, that's why this happened. Everybody, I love reading those comments. Thank yeah. you to everybody who said that this happened because I couldn't drive. Thank you so much. It was that was insightful. It's very yeah. eye-opening. Yeah. It was eye-opening. I need to get better. Crank and rod bearings don't fit because how I the push driver sucks. It did, <laughs> for sure. That's not what happens. I need to learn how to shift. Uh, 3,000 RPMs. I, I guess, yeah. I don't even know what I could have done yeah. different. What? Uh, uh. <laughs> that would have hey, kept it together for sure. So I guess you guys are partially right. <laughs> If I would have shifted at 2,000 RPM know, every I time, just... that is insane. And again, Damn, the bro. only funny part about this is that we never touched a single bit of this, and we brought all of this and shifted it off to them in California. It sat there for six months. We verified, I say we, they verified that everything was good. We got shipped back a full long block. Be very cautious and very conscious of where you take your car's engines to get built. Because despite what people say on the internet, this is real life. <laughs> this is what it looks like to literally throw $20,000 in a year's time down the drain. That was a lot of time wasted for me. Bad, actually. And you guys, I know, have been super upset about it. And I really, really wish I had the answers for you. 
we did not until today. So again, all of the comments about me not being able to drive or the issues we're faking stuff or whatever, this is just honestly the horrible nightmare that has been a thing now for a year and a half and I haven't even really gotten to talk about it. The first time that we had a failure on this exact same engine, we sent it to them because it was a, a huge disaster. If you guys remember that, it was a bad situation, seriously fast. And I didn't even do anything, didn't do anything, but yep. Yep. I almost got a lot of for it. Yep. And this is again, this is take two. The first time I tried telling you guys this was not our doing and no one would believe us. And we couldn't do anything because the engine was stuck uh, being held hostage across the country. And so it's just funny that here we are again with another failure from the exact same company on the same motor. And we have multiple failure points and multiple of these failures are only, and I mean only because of parts failures or improper torquing or improper machining or things of that sort. That's all, that's all I can really say. I'm not gonna drag anybody through the dirt. I'm not, that's not who we are here on this channel and you guys know that. So uh, I just wanna say that be very careful with who you take your car's engines to that's that's it that sucks though honestly like we just lost a whole set of cams a whole entire timing billet timing set we lost everything on this whole entire thing literally no kidding out of my pocket this was not a sponsored deal by any means out of my personal pocket there was twenty thousand dollars that literally disintegrated just like that and it sucks though because like we've been waiting all this time just to go to the track with the car and everybody keeps thinking that it's us doing this purpose but it's just not this is just really what it happens here so moving forward uh this setup is going to get changed completely in this car like 100 percent. no more supercharger and so we're going to go to rpg race engines which has been absolutely amazing uh, thank you guys at rpg will at rpg absolutely amazing amazing engine builders if you're looking for somebody to build your next engine watch this video and learn about the nightmares that really could happen by choosing the wrong company if you want somebody to look for RPG race engines. They've got, I've got their Voodoo engine revving to 9,000 RPM in my GT350 on twin 67 millimeter turbos. We made 1,100 wheel horsepower on 15 pounds just a few days ago. And again, same exact engine, two different companies. One's a 5.2 and has harmonic issues that are known about and still is holding together. 200 more horsepower at the wheel than that for a year longer and uh, has made quite a bit more than just four wide open pools. So, that is that. With that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. Comment down below. I'm interested to read your comments about what you think about this engine failure. And hopefully for everybody who sat and was talking me and talking Doug and saying that we needed to do things better around here, hopefully you bite your tongue and realize that not everything is as it seems on the internet. And despite what companies say, remember that there are contracts put in place behind the scenes where I can't really say what's going on. But believe me, this is not our fault and we're moving past it. So this is all from this point on behind us. I just wanted to explain to you guys, this is yet again, another failure that is out of my control and money gone, time wasted, but what can you do? So lesson learned. That's what it's all about. Don't lose sight guys. <laughs> if you want to go get entered in to win the 2017 Roush stage three right now, you can support us and help buy a new engine that we're still going to have to pay for because this company that we're going to be working with does not hand out things. And there's a good reason for it. And that's because quality definitely uh, is paid for. It, it outshines everything else. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. With that being said, guys, www.dls.store. See you guys next time.